Boston Children's was actually one of the first uh, hospitals to start pediatric uh, transplantation. Dr. Folkman, who was the chief of surgery here at Children's at the time, recruited a surgeon who had just uh, who had finished at Mass General Hospital by name of uh, Dr. Raphael Levy. Dr. Levy was recruited here by Dr. Folkman to start a kidney transplant program, and, uh, and that he did. One of the hardest things about kidney transplant, particularly in pediatrics, is that those are patients in, with renal failure, so they needed to be supported uh, before their transplant, sometimes after their transplant, as that graft was recovering. Well, dialysis in a little baby is quite a challenge, and yet uh, the team here developed that expertise and be able to effectively carry infants and children uh, through dialysis. The more healthy you are when you get transplanted, the better it is for the kidney transplant. Uh, potentially, it could last longer. Uh, the patient feels better. I've seen it over the years. Our dialysis techniques and how we care for our patients has improved, and subsequently, they just do better with transplantation. In Boston, I met Bill Harmon, and our initial meeting, Bill had just become chief of the Division of Nephrology here, and he was basically a big proponent of, we've got to make this. Kids are not adults. Kids are different than adults, and we've got to try and understand this. Bill decided that we were never going to improve transplant in children by doing it alone in these center-specific uh, sort of manners, every center having its own kind of protocol. And he pushed that we would try to combine our efforts and do studies as multi-center initiatives. And it was through those multi-center initiatives that we truly did um, advance uh, transplant in young kids. We started in May of 1986 was our first first uh, heart transplant. Now, the big thing that changed and the reason that we were engaged and decided to get engaged in transplant was uh, that there had been uh, new, new immunosuppressive drugs that became available. First patient wasn't really a child, he was a 17 year old. But the second transplant we did was in a patient who had had a stage one procedure for hypoplastic left heart. And so, you know, that was really our foray into, um, you know, treating patients with congenital heart disease. And we actually acquired relatively quickly over our first few years, uh, you know, one of the larger experiences with transplanting congenital heart patients. Earlier on, uh, you know, these, these are very complex procedures and um, you really have to have good communications with the surgeons because our anesthesia department is very large and uh, you can't have a surgeon and an anesthesiologist working for the first time uh, uh, doing a complicated procedure like this. So the team approach is very important. And uh, as the teams develop, uh, you know, their expertise increases. One of the things that we were able to develop after I arrived here uh, was the concept of the transplant center. And so before the transplant center was formed in the, uh, in the mid 2000s, each of the transplant programs was really in its own silo. So the kidney program team never really talked much to the liver team, and they never really talked much to the heart or lung teams. And so when we formed the transplant center in the mid 2000s, we brought all of the teams together and found out that indeed we actually had a lot of things in common. So we were able to learn um, from each other um, and um, uh, collect all of that experience and share it amongst ourselves. So that was really a, a, um, a, re a real turning point for the hospital, uh, the formation of the Transplant Center. When I first started with the program, the, the core team for heart transplant program included uh, cardiac surgeons, cardiologists, transplant coordinator, and a social worker. And now, 35 years later, the, um, with the program as it is now, we have cardiac surgeons, cardiologists, transplant coordinators, which now include nurses and nurse practitioners. We have transplant administrators, uh, transplant pharmacists, nutritionists, psychologists, social workers. And the spirit is not of competition, you know, who did better. The, really, the spirit is of collaboration, and we certainly have benefited from that. Uh, there's a pooling of ideas, there's a pooling of resources, there certainly is a focus on improvement. 
on outcomes and on programs like how do we transition um, a young adult to an adult program. We, we benefit from each other's experiences and expertise. When I have the opportunity to speak to people at other transplant centers, it is very clear that we have something truly unique at Boston Children's. Every patient involves a discussion with multiple providers and we work so closely together and we're always engaging and thinking through the individual factors for a child that may or may not be infectious diseases related. And so when I speak to colleagues at other centers, we all have the same you know, goals for, for optimally taking care of our, our transplant patients, but really the collaboration and the multidisciplinary care that children receive here is in my view truly unparalleled. Boston Children's Hospital continues to work on different strategies to increase the number of transplants for the patients in need to provide equity in access to transplants and to improve the outcomes before and after the transplantation. We have multiple ongoing and planned research projects, especially for the prevention and the treatment of chronic rejection and improving the quality of lives of our patients um, before and after the surgery. We have had, uh, we've had excellent outcomes and the goal is to continue uh, to maintain those excellent outcomes and continue to improve things over time and making those fine adjustments as we move forward um, in order to make the patient experience better, the outcomes better, and as a program, be open-minded to any changes that are necessary to make those improvements. And this requires looking at our own experiences as well as the experiences of other centers, of the research that's being done in the field, to take all those into consideration in order to continue to improve our program and the, the lives of our patients. I think it's interesting that over the last 15 years, we used to focus a lot more on short-term outcomes. How did the liver graft, how did the patient do 30 days, 90 days, one year, three years? But really, these days, we're not even thinking very much about the one and three year. We're thinking about five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. How do we get that person to the adult programs with a healthy body and a healthy graft? And I think that's really our area of focus over the last several years and also moving forward in the next five to ten years is what can we do to keep that graft for the longest period of time and keep that patient healthy so they can move on to adulthood without a new transplant. I think the vision for transplant has always been as a bridge to something else and um, transplant has always been a treatment not a cure and I really believe that if we can really understand the immune system and um, treat patients all throughout their life that that transplant could be a cure and with the novel research around chronic rejection around side effects of medications if we can give these kids a long life with the graft that they get that's really the goal and um, I think that what's happening at Boston Children's Hospital and the Pediatric Transplant Center is moving towards that goal. Another way to look at it though as transplant physicians is how can we take care of our patients and the disorders and diseases they have so that they never need an organ transplant. That includes medical advances, diagnostic advances, genetic testing, and so forth so that we don't have as many patients on waiting lists and we can have patients have healthy lives without needing the transplant to begin with. When I take a step back from my day-to-day -day work and think about all of those families, all those lives that were impacted um, by transplantation in the last 50 years, whose lives were dramatically changed, I really think about the incredible impact that we've made and lives that we've changed. And I also think I reflect back on all those donor families whose sacrifice has made our work possible and has given us the ability to change the lives of our patients. It's a burden that we wear heavy, um, but at the same time, it's one that I think is really gratifying. And I just think again about the number of lives that we've changed over the last 50 years.